Welcome back. Jeff Roberts has been living with IBS for more than 25 years. Jeff's problem, however, is the opposite of Suzanne's. Thank you so much for coming in, Jeff. Thank you. It's, you know, one or the other. It's, or what was your term? Lump or... Uh, Lumpers or splitters. Lumpers or splitters, okay. Um, your, your problem is different from, from Suzanne's in that your issue is diarrhea. Right, that's right. I suffer from diarrhea, predominant IBS, and I've suffered with this illness for over 25 years. So, like Suzanne, as, as a young person at 15 years old, I was suffering from an illness that was really ruling my life. It was very difficult to, to cope with the illness, to really partake in events that my friends were partaking in. Um, and I went from doctor to doctor looking for a solution for this, something that was so crippling, so painful in my gut, and, and really ruling my life. Uh, when I was in my 20s, I began really to take charge of my life and realized that this was a chronic illness, that it was something that I had to deal with, and started to roll with the punches. Uh, meaning that I was able to deal with it as things came along. I realized that I was going to have good days and I was going to have bad days. And when you talk about it ruling your life, can you give me a sense as a 15-year-old how, how it ruled your life? Well, I also suffer from lactose intolerance, so I, I was having difficulty with dairy products at the time as well. But my friends would get together to have pizza, for instance. And pizza being one food that seems to bother myself because of uh, also dairy products, but also because of IBS. It's, it's a fatty food, and, and I found out that fatty foods contributed to my illness, contributed to the pain as well as the diarrhea. So I wasn't able to partake with my friends and, and join them in, in having a party, for instance. And as a grown-up, I mean, just the fear of leave. Th there was a level of isolation that both of you experienced, right? Yeah. <clears throat> um, for myself, it was, you know, having to live on laxatives and always being constipated. It made me not want to go out because I constantly had that bloating feeling, my clothes never fit right. I was scared that what if I went out and all of a sudden sort of the laxatives would break through this wall in my stomach and, you know, I'd be stuck in a public bathroom and that was just fear for me. Exactly. I mean, I, when I was in university, before I entered any of the lecture halls, I always made sure I, I knew exactly where the bathrooms were in case I had to leave very quickly. So after a period of time, uh, I became very comfortable with, with certain locations and going to them. But as I became older and I have a family now, there are family events that I'm, I don't feel comfortable attending because I'm not sure of the surroundings or I'm affecting my family because I have severe pain and I can't leave the home or I can't leave the bathroom. So you haven't managed to, I mean, you talk about rolling with the punches, but you haven't had the same experience as Suzanne where, where drugs, and we'll talk a little bit more about drug therapy in a moment, but where drugs seem to have worked. Well, I've certainly tried many drugs over the years, and there's, there are certain drugs that do help uh, the pain and some that help the diarrhea, but there's nothing in particular that helps both pain and diarrhea at the same time. And that's part of the difficulty with irritable bowel syndrome is that it is a syndrome. It's a collection of various different problems that, that are occurring, and there's not one particular drug that helps diarrhea-predominant IBS sufferers. Dr. Cohen, you're nodding your head because that's what you have to tell your male patients or, or the patients who suffer from the diarrhea aspect of it. Right, and we're seeing actually two very dramatic cases here, and one can't apply a broad stroke to all patients. Everyone is unique, and everyone has to be treated as unique uh, issues and concerns, and we'll get into the drug management of it, but the variety of uh, issues here include diet management, lifestyle, and drug therapy. But look at the impact this has had on lives and the power this has had in uh, our society in terms of uh, lost employment, uh, family disruption, and it's a major uh, clinical problem that has to be addressed properly. Well, and you were mentioning to our producer just about you felt like you sort of were well beyond your years because you were constantly focused on bowel movements. Exactly. Here I was, 23 years old. I, you know, I should be enjoying myself, and I was obsessing over my bowels. Was I going to the bathroom? Wasn't I? became a topic of discussion at home with my family, like, so did you go to the bathroom today? I felt like I should have been, you know, sitting down with my grandmother as we're eating our high-fiber breakfast, Your discussing prunes. our <laughs> bowels. Exactly. And that became a big thing for me was every day it was like, wow, I haven't gone to the bathroom. And it just, it became an obsession. Yeah, that's a very good word, actually, obsession, because I hear that from a lot of individuals that, and, and doctors as well, that are referring to patients that they're obsessing over their bowels. But unfortunately, this is an illness that does rule our lives, and we have to deal with it on a, on a daily basis. When I get up first thing in the morning, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to feel. So the hardest part of the day for me, for myself personally, is, is leaving the home and getting ready for work.
And, and, and what we hear is disruption, embarrassment of a daily function that everybody in the world experiences, and yet this interferes with our daily activities. And to the point where you felt as though you needed to set up a self-help, a support group, right. which has been helping a lot of people, I guess just to get over the embarrassment of even talking about it. Exactly. That's a very good point. Uh, what I find is that uh, individuals don't really have anybody to talk to. They may have their spouse or they may have one friend or they may have their physician, but they're dealing with this on a daily basis. And so it's, it's, uh, the support group is very helpful to allow them to express themselves, to validate their illness, to understand that there's other individuals who are suffering from the similar illness. And when you talk about not having a drug that helps you, but obviously taking, feeling as though you've taken control of your uh, nutrition and all the rest of it, which is an area we're going to get into in just a moment, but do you feel as though a, a drug would be able to, I mean, are you looking forward to a drug to be out there, or do you feel as though you can sort of handle it on your own? Yes, there is a drug, kind of an opposite drug to uh, Zelnorm. There is a drug called Lotronex, which was available in the United States for a period of time that ran into some complications in its initial marketing. Um, that is a drug that could have the potential to help my diarrhea predominant IBS. It's not a drug that's available in Canada as of yet, and there are no plans to reintroduce it into Canada. So unfortunately, um, if I want to feel as well as Suzanne is feeling right now, I may have to go to the United States in order to uh, find this drug. And that must be frustrating for you, Dr. Cohen, to know that there's a drug that's available in the States but not here. Uh, it certainly is very frustrating, and we have to deal with alternatives, but uh, when you do know there's a product that can be effective, not available, one has to really reassess the whole treatment plan for the specific type of uh, uh, irritable bowel patient. Okay, and we do know that there aren't drugs out there for everybody, but one of the things that can have a huge impact is nutrition. We're going to have more on that in just a moment. Please stay with us.